Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting polynomial equation with complex numbers. So we have z plus 1 to the 10th power equals z to the 10th power and we're going to be solving for z values. We can definitely talk about um, at least two methods. There's probably more ways to do it and let's get started. So first of all, I want you to think about the real case scenario. How would you solve this problem if you were looking for real solutions only, right? You would probably just say, okay, if a to the 10th power is equal to b to the 10th, then this implies a equals b, right? Yes, that's partially true because it also implies a equals negative b. When you raise negative b to the 10th power, you get the same thing as b to the 10th power, right? So we kind of need to consider two cases. First case, a equals b. So if you just get rid of the 10th powers, in other words, the, take the 10th root of both sides, then you're going to get something like this. Case 1, z plus 1 equals z. z cancels out, 1 equals 0. Hmm, that doesn't make sense, does it? Nonsense. So no solution from here. Okay, what about the second case? The second case is where you consider the opposite of the base, which is negative z, and that's definitely gonna give us something nice. Put the z's on the same side, 2z or not 2z, do you z what i z? Equals negative one, and z equals negative one half. And negative one half works because if you add one to negative one half, you get one half, and when you raise one half to the tenth power, it's the same thing as negative one half to the tenth power. So we have a real solution, and that's actually the only real solution because you can't get anything else from here. Now, this is a desic equation, a tenth power. This is also desic. So is the resulting equation desic? No, because e to the tenth power is going to cancel out, leaving us with a what was the name for? Nonic. Okay, N O N, right? Nonic equation, which is not 10th power, I mean 9th power. So you can go ahead and definitely consider the binomial theorem, which is the, um, you know, uh, the combinatorial coefficients are going to come up. So something like 10 to 0, z to the 10th. 10 to 0 is 1, by the way, you don't have to write it, just for completeness sake, maybe. 10 choose 1, z to the 9th, and I don't have to worry about the powers of 1 because they're all 1. And then you get 10 choose 2, z to the 8th, so on and so forth. And when you set this equal to z to the 10th, obviously z to the 10th is going to cancel out, leaving us with a nonic equation, okay, a nonic polynomial. But guess what? There is no nonic formula, there is no octic formula, and you know, there's not even a quintic formula, which is pretty sad, but anyways... What can you do about it, right? Some quintics are solvable, and some people say they're not solvable by radicals, but they are. Anyways, I'm not talking about that. Don't worry about it. There's no quintic equation, okay? Just accept the fact that there is none. Anyways, so these are co going to complicate things. So there's there should definitely be a simpler way to approach it, and that's what we're, we're going to talk about now. Since we have 10th power on both sides, we can maybe have a complex approach. And what is that complex approach is basically one way to approach it is you can consider the polar forms. So, for example, you can replace Z with uh, R e to the I theta or R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. That's one way to do it. Or you can replace uh, Z with A plus B I. But the problem with that is you're going to have to deal with binomial theorem again in a worse way. <laughs> Worser? Should I say worser? Worser? Worst? So, anyways, so that's not a really good way to do it, but with the um, trigonometric polar form, uh, things might be a little easier. The problem is, though, if you think about the absolute values, we kind of have the following scenario. If you take the absolute values on both sides, you can realize that, okay, the absolute value of this equals the absolute value of this. But then you can take out the 10th powers, and then could we just eliminate them well here's what you need to think about again this gives you two real numbers right at the base so you have to consider a equals b and a equals negative b so from here you get this and or 
this. But this one is kind of problematic because the problem with that is if you put these on the same side, you're going to get two absolute values adding up to zero. But notice, these are real values. When you add two real numbers and you get a zero and they're non-negative, right? So they both have to be zero. Is that possible? That's something to think about. You can go ahead and replace Z with A plus B, I, so on and so forth. So that's kind of problematic. So that's why I would recommend, and this could probably get somewhere, I don't know. This is what I would recommend for a problem like this. By the way, you could also subtract z to the 10th and use the difference of 10th powers, but I don't think so. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by z to the 10th, which is nice because this gives us 1. And then we can kind of put these together, can't we? So here's the idea. We have a number whose 10th power is 1. And 1 can be written in the complex word. In other words, we're trying to complexify it as e to the power 2 pi n i. Beautiful. Which means cosine of 2 pi n plus i sine 2 pi n. The reason why we use an n, and by the way n is an integer, is because um, you can do multiple rotations. There are multiple values. It's a multi-valued uh, representation. But if you want to go with the principal value or just take n equals 1, I guess, uh, you could go off of that too. But I'm going to stick to n because we're about to uh, raise both sides to the power 1 tenth. So in other words, to solve for z, I need to clear the 10 first. So I'm going to go ahead and raise it to the power 1 tenth. And of course, I have to do the same thing on the right hand side, right? Great. Now from here, the 10 and the 1 tenth cancel out. And then we get z plus 1 over z equals e to the power 2 pi n i times 1 tenth. That's going to be pi n i divided by 5. Again, remember, n is an integer. Now at this point, you might do a couple different things. Try to solve for z, right? That should be too hard. Let's go ahead and cross multiply because I really want to get something uh, nice uh, for z. And then we would probably just put everything on the same side like this, subtract z and leave the one alone. And then factor out a z, you're going to get this minus 1 equals 1. And then you can just go ahead and write this as 1 over e to the power 2 pi n i over 5 minus 1. So whatever this value is, we need to subtract 1 from it. And you can kind of get into the nitty gritty of, you know, just multiplying by the conjugate, so on and so forth. You don't really have to worry about it. But one thing that I want to mention here is the fact that this can be written as cosine of 2 pi n over 5 plus i sine of 2 pi n over 5. And then you're subtracting 1 from this. So at this point, it might be helpful to use the double angle formulas. I don't know. I mean, you don't have to. But you can kind of use something like for this, 1 minus 2 sine squared. Remember those formulas? Pi n over 5, which is the cosine 2x formula. And for the sine, you can do the same thing. By the way, this is a 2. i times 2 times sine pi n over 5 times cosine pi n over 5. Remember, uh, we're cutting the angle in half, like 2 sine x cosine x is equal to sine of 2x. And then minus 1, and then these two are going to cancel out. You can take out a negative 2 sine pi n over 5, and inside you're going to get sine pi n over 5 plus, I think that's going to be a minus, right? Did I take out a minus sign? Anyways, I think that should be a minus sign. And that will be minus cosine of pi n over 5. Anyways, you can do lots of different conversions because this will also be represented as cosine theta plus i sine theta, so on and so forth. By the way, I forgot the i. Here we go. Anyways, let me show you what Wolfram Alpha provides partially. I didn't copy and paste the whole thing, but you get the idea if you go ahead and check it out uh, and say complex solutions because otherwise you're only going to get real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.